What's up everybody, JJ here, and for once, we're not checking out a 3D printer today. I'm reviewing my first CNC router. This is the SaneSmart 3018 Prover V2. It's a new entry-level CNC machine by SaneSmart, and a lot of this review is not from an experienced CNC user. This is as a beginner into CNC routing. I'm definitely way more of a 3D printing expert, so this review will be a beginner's look at CNC routing. This is a whole new field of manufacturing that I've never really looked into, and so I'm really excited to be able to combine 3D printing and CNC routing, maybe in some future projects. I have also done some laser engraving reviews, so I can kind of compare the three together. I think that can be a whole separate video once I have a little bit more experience with this to be able to compare it. But first look at this new machine. So first off, we should talk about the build volume of this machine, because that's gonna be a big limiting factor to what kind of projects you can do on this machine versus a bigger, larger, more expensive CNC router. With this one, you get 290 by 180 by 40 millimeters tall in travel. So your biggest limiting factor will be that Z height. That is bigger than the V1 in all of those dimensions, so that is a nice upgrade there. The next big difference here is this build plate. This is a big solid block of aluminum versus in the V1, it was an aluminum extrusion. This is covered in holes so you can secure these clamps in a bunch of different places. These stock clamps were a little fiddly to work with and I think I'll just have to 3D print some extra ones but I wanted to try these out to see how good they were. And they work, they just took a while to get set up correctly. The next big upgrade between this one and the last one is around the back here. We've got a great control board on here. This is upgraded from the 8-bit of the original to a 32-bit controller inside here. It's got this nice casing that it comes in and has labeled all the ports on here. They do give you a bit of expandability if you wanted to add extra features on here. The few that come in the box, there's a really nice Z probe here that I really enjoyed using and made homing and leveling this thing very easy. I wasn't expecting to like an offline controller here. After using the laser engravers, I didn't like using their offline controllers. But this one, I really enjoyed it, being able to jog it around, homing and using the probe. Initially, I had a laptop set up next to it so I could have it directly plugged in and doing some real quick testing. And then every time since then, I just load it onto this micro SD card, take it out there, plug it in, and I can start a job directly from there. So that's really nice for someone who doesn't want to lug their laptop out to where they're going to be running their CNC machine, or maybe you don't even have a laptop, you just have a desktop computer, you can just load it on this micro SD card and take it wherever this machine goes. And assembly of this machine was the next thing that was really nice. It takes about 30 minutes to get it all assembled, similar to putting a 3D printer together. You put the side panels on, put things together just a little bit, plug in wires, super simple, super easy to do. I was expecting it to be a lot harder, but then I realized on this V2, they really upgraded the assembly process and I really saw it with this being so easy to put together. Another nice feature to talk about here, and I think it goes into the discussion on safety here, is it's got in stops on both the positive and negative of both the X, Y, and Z axes. That's super nice because just in case you slice your G-code wrong, you're not gonna have this slam into the sides here incorrectly or try to move in an unsafe way. If it hits those in stops while it's working, it auto cuts the machine. So it's not gonna damage itself if you're running incorrect G-code on this machine. There's still other ways it can go wrong and you can damage things, but that is where this in stop goes in right here. It's really nice to have an E stop, emergency stop, cuts everything off at any time. It's essential on a dangerous, fast-moving machine like this, so it's really, just really nice to have a button right there, easy to press. Another thing to think about with safety is how to keep yourself safe, and safety glasses are the best way to do that. Really is kind of the only thing you need safety-wise when running this machine. You do need to make sure you're back from the machine, make sure your hair is tied back if you've got long hair, loose sleeves are tied back so no loose clothing. This is gonna be spinning extremely quickly. Anything gets caught in there could end bad, stay away from the machine, and that's kind of all you gotta think about. And it's kind of weird, I felt safer using this than I did using a laser engraver. With this, there's only this spinning spindle you gotta be aware of. And I was holding a board in front of this, kind of between me and it, just in case. I have heard stories of small bits breaking off, and so I was just worried. I kept a board there just in case something were to fly out very quickly. And so your biggest danger here is this thing spinning very quickly. On a laser engraver, on the other hand, you've got this laser that's kind of invisible. If it were to bounce wrong, hit your eye, you could be blind immediately. Also, the fumes that are coming off of a laser engraver, you need to protect yourself from. So whether you're filtering it or exhausting it in some way, it's an added layer of things you need to think about. With here, you do need to think about those chips that are gonna be flying off here. And I think we need to talk about what other things you need to buy 
to go with this machine. So this you can find for around $300, but you're not done buying things yet unless you have a well-stocked shop and a bunch of things I needed to buy for this. While this thing is running, it's gonna be making a lot of chips and you need a way to suck that up to keep everything clean here. This is the cheapest Harbor Freight shop vac I could find. It was about 30 or 40 bucks. Works great for this. For a small use case, I'm not gonna be, it's not engraving huge pieces of wood and I don't need a big long hose because this is a fairly small and compact machine. Another safety thing that's really important to think about is your hearing. I was just using some noise canceling headphones and it did a good job at blocking out the noise here. It's not crazy loud, but if you were sitting next to it with your hearing unprotected, you could do long-term damage there. So whether you have some either noise canceling headphones or buy some earmuffs that'll block out the sound here, you really need something if you're gonna be sitting next to this while it's running, which you really should be. The next added cost you need to think about when it comes to this machine are buying bits. This one comes with a little pack of 10 very small V-carve bits and an eighth inch little collet in there so you can only use eighth inch bits. I initially did some testing with these, but I was so bored with how long it takes. They're great for really small details and they'd be amazing if you want small lettering in something, those would be great. But I wanted to do more bigger things and so I just went ahead and bought a quarter inch collet in there and several quarter inch bits. I'm not really an expert, I just bought a little pack from Amazon that has some V bits and rounded over bits. I'll link it in the description if anyone's interested. If you're an expert out there and have a recommendation for beginner bits, be sure to put it in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you and I'm sure other people would have the same feeling. And now that you know all the things you'll need, we can talk about testing with this machine and what I was able to get out of it. These first cuts turned out so good for me having almost no experience. I first used the test files to run through and they worked pretty good but I was kind of disappointed with that small V-carve bit. And so then I upgraded to these quarter inch bits. I was using Easel as my software. I heard it was a good free one. You, there is a free version of it. You could upgrade to Pro if you want those features, but I found good luck using the free version so far. So this, of course I had to do a hello world here and it looks amazing. I wasn't expecting it to turn out this good for my first attempt. It ran off the edge there just because this thing wasn't squared. With how much trouble I was having with laser engraving, I was not expecting things to turn out this good on the first try. My channel logo up here, you can see the details are good with that little eighth inch bit, but it's not as good at clearing out these large areas of wood. Then I moved on to some aluminum and had a bunch of issues. So this was supposed to be a really basic triangle and I got so much chatter and bouncing with this thing. There could be a lot of issues for why this didn't work out for me. And I'm sure some of those issues were on me with this being my first attempt at it. I do think the bit I was using was too long. It stuck out a really long way. So then I had to move the whole spindle housing up to get this piece of aluminum. This was a 25 millimeter piece. So I had to sort of move the spindle up in the housing here. Here's the bit I was using, and that might be the wrong bit for this machine for what I was doing. Since it is a bigger quarter inch bit, it's really trying to hog out a lot. And then the settings could have been wrong. I just used the auto settings inside of easel. But my initial thoughts are, it's not easy to cut aluminum and it's very easy to get good results out of wood. So I think that just about covers all the beginner things you need to get up and running with this CNC machine. If you're a beginner and don't know a lot like I was a few weeks ago, this is a very easy to use machine. I think they put a lot of these nice parts in here to get you up and running. And it is important to think about the added costs of a machine like this. Some sort of dust collection is important. Added bits because they didn't include very many in here. And then of course the materials of whatever you're planning on making with this machine. This machine does make me glad I didn't try out CNC any earlier because all the nice safety features here makes things very easy to set up and get working and I would have had a lot more trouble if this machine was harder to use. But anyway, that just about wraps up this review. Let me know if you have any more questions or things I didn't cover in this review. This is kind of an initial look from a beginner's perspective. I'm gonna do a lot more projects with this in the upcoming weeks. Make sure to subscribe if you're interested in that. Well, as always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.